Hi, my name is Jonathan Johnson. I'm the Chief of Pediatric Cardiology here at Mayo Clinic. I'm joined today by Dr. Elizabeth Stevens, one of our congenital heart surgeons with a particular interest in neonatal heart surgery. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Stevens. Oh, this is great. Um, I, I'm interested from your perspective as a cardiologist, you've followed these patients for many years, sometimes even since birth or pregnancy. And based on that long-term relationship, what do you recommend for families in terms of questions they should be asking their cardiologist if their child is getting close to an intervention? Yeah. Well, I think the most important thing is the relationship you should mm -hmm. really have that relationship with your cardiologist that you feel like you can ask them anything. Mm -hmm. And so along those lines, you really want to ask them uh, about their comfort level and, and about recommending the surgery, weighing the risks and balances, the, weighing the risks and benefits of the surgery, um, and then understanding the best timing for the surgery. So it may be that you have a wide time range where you mm -hmm. could do the surgery. Maybe it is something that needs to be done sooner rather than later, um, and trying to balance that with, with what your family needs and, sure. and the important things that are going on with everybody else. Um, it's also important to understand surgeons and locations. Um, I think many families may, when they, I recommend a surgery for their child, they may want me to say a particular surgeon's name, sure. this is who I want to mm -hmm. do it, and that's it. And others would like me to bring them data, and we talk about different surgeons, different centers, and then what their different expertise levels are, um, and how that would fit well with the surgery that their child needs. Um, and then lastly, about optimizing them for surgery. So it may be that I need to tweak their medications or somehow change their management a little bit before surgery to really give them the best chance around the time of surgery. Well, we all work as a team for these patients, and that's one of the things that as I think about, many families might not be aware of um, when they meet a cardiologist or asking a cardiologist about a center or meeting a surgeon is how multidisciplinary um, the care at a given institution is. And I think these days for congenital, um, so many of our procedures are either um, interventional and then surgical, or surgical then interventional, um, or combined approach. And so I think that's something that families should be asking. Do they have a multidisciplinary team where the patient's care really comes first? Because that's what we want the patient to have the ultimate care, and whether it's the the cath doctor or the interventional doctor or the surgical team or both. So that's something that I've been thinking about that families should be aware of and asking about. That's a really great point. And I think that multidisciplinary care that you mentioned really expands into the perioperative sure, time right. period, right? So within our ICU team and our anesthesia team, really anybody that's involved in taking care of the patient at, in the hospital, having a plan going into surgery, and then having a, a great plan coming out of surgery too for sure. those first couple of days, which can be the toughest after a heart surgery. Um, and kind of speaking of all those different kind of pieces of multidisciplinary care, is there, is there anything that us cardiologists can, can do to help prep the families for what to expect first for surgery and the time after surgery? I think that's a great question and that's something that they should be asking their cardiologists and the surgeons specifically about expectations. We all feel more comfortable if we know what to expect. Um, and so from a surgical standpoint, the family should be asking the surgeon what to expect the day of surgery, how long should the procedure be expected to take, and when would the surgeon see the family after the procedure, and then when would the family see the patient, because there is a delay after the procedure is done. And then also, what is the patient gonna look like when they first see them? Are they gonna be asleep? Are they gonna have a breathing tube? So those things can help really prepare the family. And then questions related to hospitalization, how long in the hospital, how long in the ICU, um, and then the other thing that I think both the cardiologists and surgeons uh, should also um, counsel the families uh, on is long-term expectations. So some of our patients, they are expected to have one heart surgery. They should be, otherwise the heart function should be normal and they can be a normal kid, with, albeit with a scar. Um, in terms of sports and everything else. And then other patients of ours can be expected to have multiple surgeries as part of a series, and their function might not be as good. They might not be the star athlete, but they can do plenty of other things to contribute. So I think both our, the cardiologist and the surgeon can help inform uh, the family on those uh, topics. That's a great point. Um, you know, speaking of expectations a little bit, I think we have a lot of families who are asking us, and, and you can see it widely reported everywhere about public reporting and transparency right. and, yes. and surgical outcomes. I wonder if you can you know, help, um, you know, what should our parents be, be understanding or, or I want you to ask about those kind of things? That's a great question. Um, and just to give some background, what's available online is publicly reported outcomes. It's for a, a given institution, so it's four years of pooled data, and there are operations that are grouped. So I think one of the key parts of this is the family needs to understand how their child fits into that 
all that data mm -hmm. um, because the data is adjusted as they can for risk. So your child might be a higher risk or a lower risk within all that data. So I would encourage families to bring that data to the surgeon and the cardiologist and say, this is what I see. How does my child fit into all these numbers? Mm -hmm. And I think another very important point is that this data was never meant and really can't be used to compare centers mm -hmm. because the case mix is so different between centers and things like that. So it shouldn't be used to be compare centers. It can aid a family in kind of understanding what to expect, but really bringing that before the cardiologist or a surgeon and, and asking, how does my child fit into all these numbers? Yeah. Oh, that's an incredible point. We get so many questions, right, about how to, how to do that. And yeah. being able to have that conversation with the cardiologist and the surgeons is, is the best thing, right? right. And help them right. work through that data for your child, right? right. Um, you know, speaking of meeting with the surgeons, I think, you know, and, and don't take this the wrong way, but you guys are, are rock stars. You, you're, you're, your names are all over the websites and the internet, and people talk about how great and different surgeries that you do. So when families meet you, sometimes it can probably feel a little intimidating, like there's certain things they can't ask or, or, or they have trouble kind of coming up with those questions when they first meet you. Is there any advice you have for families in those situations? I think, it, it, you know, it is can be a little intimidating. I think some of the key points to ask your surgeon is, is to get a sense of the experience that that surgeon has and the institution has of taking care of that type of patient. Um, the second uh, point is how much the family wants to know about the surgery. So some families just kind of want to know the name and the basic concept of what you're doing. Other families really get are interested in um, kind of take some comfort in understanding the details of what you're doing. Um, and so as a surgeon, you, you can you know explain it in a way that a non-medical person can understand kind of the steps of what you do and why you do what you do. And fam some families really enjoy that and find comfort in that. Yeah. So kind of figuring out that balance of what how much detail you want to know and maybe how much you don't want to know. I think another key point is to find out if, if you're at a training institution, there may be trainees involved. So at Mayo, we don't have a congenital fellowship. We don't have congenital fellows. But at other institutions, there may be trainees involved. And so you would specifically want to ask, is there and trainee involved and how are they involved? Um, at Mayo, we actually have two senior surgeons who do the cases for the neonates and the complex infants. So that's a little different, but understanding who's doing what and who's doing the the yeah. meat of the case is important. Um, and I think lastly, it's very important that you have a good rapport with your surgeon. Um, we might not be known as a group to have a great bedside manner, but you need to trust this person, feel that they give you realistic expectations, mm -hmm. that they hear your concerns, because this is a very important relationship and they're kind of the leader of all these specialists who are taking care of your child. So having a good relationship and having a good comfort level is really important. Yeah. Well, I think that really uh, kind of beautifully segues into the follow-up sure, needs for these yes. families, right? Yeah. So, you know, as we um, as you transition from that surgical period and you have those different details that need to be known, um, what we as cardiologists really appreciate is the communication, communication from, from you yeah. guys. And we, I know when you do a surgery for a patient of mine, you always call me. And we <laughs> yeah. talk about what happened, right. exactly the, the, the details right. uh, of the operation. And then I have a really good idea kind of going forward of how, how we need to take care of those patients. And it, it can, that can really impact everything from sure. how quickly I take away the medications they were discharged on to how quickly I can let them get back to school and uh, how quickly I can let them get back to basketball practice. Right. Um, all those kinds of things. Um, so that, can, that communication and, and that follow-up period is so important. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This was, was fantastic. This was great. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you all of us for joining us. And please feel free to reach out if you have any questions at all about your child's heart care or heart surgical needs.